Okay, so our third lesson is leading your small group. So for example, uh, we hope you have applied the first and second lesson already, which is about engaging your community and then equipping your converts. So now you now have um, some converts or some people who are part of your Bible studies or your uh, group point groups or your small groups. So how do you lead the program or the, the flow? What's the flow of um, the Bible study in your house or in a coffee shop or it depends in your church? Depends on where you meet. So there are many ways to lead a discipleship group meeting. But here's a suggested discipleship group format with four sections. And this format has been tested and applied here in the Philippines by, by big churches like CCF or I think Victory. So it's really the same thing. So I think this, this fits uh, Filipino audiences. So you can change a little bit when when you're discipling, you know, some Americans maybe or some other people uh, who have different cultures. But basically, this is this is the simple flow. The first would be warm up, okay. <coughs> Next would be the word, the most important part. Then you apply the word to their lives, and then you will have a short time of prayer in the end. It depends. You you could close in prayer or. Usually what we do here is we proceed to a short prayer time. Um, but when you have like all new converts or new Christians, we don't know how to pray corporately. So it's better that you pray. You just close in prayer or you ask what, what they uh, need to pray about and then you pray for it. And that's the closing prayer. But, but if you have groups who have been believers for a long time and you're just teaching them the material, they know how to pray corporately. So it's it's better that you will proceed to a short prayer time okay so after after the application so in this format ideally a discipleship group meeting lasts from 60 to 90 minutes so one one and a half, half hour it's better for the people to leave the discipleship group, meet, group meeting wishing it had been longer than to leave wishing it had been shorter and those who wish it was longer will look forward to coming back next week less is more okay less is more and usually what happens is that it will become longer again because you, know, you, like, you love to fellowship, snacks, talk, talk to each other. And that's fine as long as the formal part of the program, you will keep it short. Because whatever is formal, there's pressure. Okay? And we don't want people to, to be pressured for a long time in, in our discipleship. The pressure will be gone you know, after you close in prayer, like Jesus' name, amen. And pressure is gone you can now have snacks talk to each other so sometimes people will stay for one hour two hours after that because there's no more pressure so so the point is just keep the formal part short and you know just enjoy the fellowship after that it's all about building relationships with your disciples not, not really all about the the program so um therefore better to sh uh to be short then uh than to look i think the notes Something's wrong with the notes, okay? But it says it's better to have a short, uh, formal Bible study than than making it too long. So the first one is the warm up. What do you do to so warm up in this format? Each discipleship group meeting begins with a warm up question. So it's better not to dive in the, uh, directly to the teaching. I think something like that will happen, okay? Uh, from time to time, but. If, if things are normal, <clears throat> you start with warm-up first. The warm-up is designed to give everybody a chance to speak. It helps people to connect with and get to know each other, um, especially if you have a diverse group of small group or people that you're discipling with. Some of them are old believers, new believer, uh, people from this town, people from this town, middle class, upper class, you know, economically so. Uh, they don't really know each other, probably. So you have to use this time for them to connect with each other and get to know each other. The discipleship group should introduce uh, the warm-up question and encourage everyone to answer. It's, it's very simple when, uh, when uh, mga questions, no? Um, it should be a question related to the topic in some way, but it should not require any Bible knowledge to answer. That means... Um, even if the person is a new believer, he can answer the question. So you don't ask a difficult theological questions, you know, like what's the difference or how do, how do you balance sovereignty and man's responsibility? Excuse me. 
that's a little bit uh, difficult for a new believer to answer okay so if the one word question is too spiritual too theological or too controversial it will make visitors and non-believers feel uncomfortable and we don't want that the first few minutes of the formal part of the program the warm-up is designed to help visitors drop their guard so they are ready for the lesson okay so here are uh, some tips to help discipleship group leader during the warm-up time one use only one warm-up question for one discipleship group meeting again don't don't make this time uh, too long just you know one question is enough just to warm them up and usually people will answer uh, longer so if you will have more questions you will get more long answers and it will take so much time if the lesson takes uh, more than one discipleship group meeting to complete use a different warm-up question each week okay so if you will break the lesson into two don't don't use the warm-up question uh, the previous week and then ask it again with the next week you know find another question or make another question feel free to make up your own warm-up question you know your people uh, you know them better than other people so you you can make make up your own question encourage everyone to answer designate who should answer they don't say okay who will volunteer to answer because you know what nobody wants to volunteer yet so and it will create an awkward moment uh you know bad momentum okay? so it's better yeah uh, designate who should answer so since everyone is required to answer so warm up then just pinpoint you first and then the rest can can follow and then good warm-up questions have you know have these characteristics one they have they have no right or wrong answers okay uh, they ask for an opinion or experience they require no bible knowledge they are not controversial so you don't ask um, questions about homosexuality or uh, abortion or divorce because it's, it's very controversial or maybe some political questions don't do that it's a warm-up because you know it might get uh, bad you know, momentum or you might get controversial um, answers as well that you don't agree and then you will also answer back and then there will be just back and forth wasting time creating a bad atmosphere so and uh, questions that are connected to the topic so here's here are some options so monasha so warm up very short in the time i think we got that part already but the next part would be the word so notice um why why are we not singing we're not worshiping before the word because remember this is not a worship service the group point group is not a worship service okay and um not everyone will meet in the house where it's okay for you to sing as a small group like in our case you know we're very careful not to offend the neighbors by being noisy so we don't sing okay uh, some people will meet in the coffee shop. You can't do that, diba? So um, if you meet in your house where there's there's exclusivity and you want to sing, then go. But you know it, it doesn't have to be like that. You can proceed to the word directly. You can proceed to the teaching after the the warm up. The word time is a fifteen to thirty minute teaching on the text or topic of the week. To me, <clears throat> excuse me. To me, 30 minutes is too long now when you are just in your house and uh, or you're in a coffee shop or somewhere in a discipleship mode because, um, the, again, this is not a church service. We are used to uh, teach 30 to 40 minutes in a church service. But remember, discipleship is not a church service. This is, this is a time where you're building a relationship with that person or a group, and then you're trying to help them um, get to know God by teaching them uh, the discipleship material. So, and usually 30 minutes is too long for a group or a, a time where supposed to be uh, there's lesser pressure than the church or formal activities in the church. So, my goal is always 15 to 20 minutes, except if there's really an important lesson that will take time, like, you know, the gospel or spirit filled life. Sometimes it's, you cannot really finish that in 20 minutes so you go over the 30 minutes but the shorter the better this brief teaching is followed by a time of application where all the participants are encouraged to share how they will put the lesson <clears throat> into practice 
So following are a few tips to help the discipleship group leader during the time uh, of the word. One, don't pretend to be an expert or a Bible know at all, know it all. Okay, how much of the Bible you obey is much more important than all the facts that you know. Okay, so just just teach whatever you know. Okay, and the material is is good enough. You don't need to stress out yourself or spend more time. You know finding more material that you can add to the material of the day. Uh, that's not sustainable if, if you have a very um, busy schedule. So whatever is there, then you teach it. Whatever you know about that, then that's what you share. You have if you've got questions that you don't know, you say, I don't know the answer. I will Google it this week. We'll talk about it next week. You know, very simple. The discipleship group leader is the guide, the chairman, the leader, meaning the one who goes first and sets the example for others to follow and also you are also a participant so so sometimes um i speak first like if there's a warm-up question and you know i sense that it will be helpful if i will answer it first and i answer it first you you become the example okay so the same with with the teaching of, of god's word uh, you have to be an example you also are a participant the discipleship meeting is more than a bible study it requires a good leader, not an expert nga teacher. This is what we mean. You don't have to be very long teaching because you don't have to be a good or an expert teacher. You just have to be a good leader who shares something to, to the people. This is just like a parent talking to the kids in a time, to their kids. Very relational, very intimate, very simple nga, in a time. Let the Bible speak for itself. Martin Luther said, I just look for the plain meaning in scripture. Why? In the obvious sense of the Bible, I find the new well, comfort, energy, adequacy, genuine learning. So let, let the Bible speak for itself. <clears throat> Do not overcomplicate the complicated Bible. Okay. So uh, just teach the material very randomly, very quickly. Okay. Remember, the goal is to minister to the needs of the people, not to finish a bible lesson so be led by the spirit not by the material so for example during the warm-up question somebody shared something uh, it, it requires a great amount of time for you to listen and there's so many emotions going on so of course because the material is is just a guide it's not really the leader the holy spirit is the leader if god will lead to you okay um just listen to him more so the group can pray so you can decide to just move the lesson next week and then you'll just focus today on listening to him or her and then you play afterward okay so that's that's a good time of discipleship okay so uh, but then you can also do do something like this yeah when when, when she or he shared some warm up the time and then you listen you prayed and you say okay uh since we're done then let's proceed to the word but then you have to be careful of the time Okay. Maybe you can shorten the application in a part because the koana mug time in the in the listening to to the, the problem of the person. So um, be led with the spirit. Use illustrations and tell stories to help explain the Bible verses. Some lessons are too long to complete in one meeting. Take two, three, or four weeks, if if necessary. Paul said, "All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching." by proof for correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work, right? So, so warm up and then the word, very simple, and then we'll proceed to application. Now, the good thing about our uh, GP Dynamics uh, material is that na po questions or application questions in the end. So, you know, can need more stress on, on what to ask. But sometimes, na yung mga timing, you can adjust the question to fit the real situation or or the people in mean, a disciple. In a discipleship group meeting, we teach the Bible so people can do it, not so they can know it. Okay, there's a difference. Application makes all the difference. It's good to know something, but it's better to do something <clears throat> in the Bible. Studying the Bible in a discipleship group meeting is about application. It's not, it's not just about information. Okay. So following are a few tips for the application time. Feel free to add your own questions. I just mentioned that. Prepare a discipleship group member or a leader your training to answer 
the application questions to set the example for others to follow. Okay, so you have to, uh, you can you can answer it yourself first, or if you want someone, maybe uh, intern your group leader, or someone that's really good in answering questions, you can send the question ahead to him or her, and and you can like tell her him or her, hey, every time I ask question, can you answer first? So, uh, so others can follow you or they can follow or they can understand more the question because of your answer. So, you can also send the question ahead to your discipleship group. It really depends sa situation. Uh, ask the application question and designate who will answer first. Otherwise, everyone will stare at their feet waiting for some brave soul to speak up first. Uh, so, it's better nga you... You just designate who will answer this specific uh, question. Avoid those awkward moments, okay? Because it's awkward. And if singing, if if every week there are awkward moments like that, it can create how the pe people will view the gathering. Okay. Do not allow people to argue with or be critical of others. Remind everyone to apply the lesson to their own lives, not someone else. So make sure that the GP group will not become a, a gossip group, okay? Because application question, that's that's a good entry for gossip. You will say, oh, my mom or my husband, or I have a, I know a Christian, or or I know a pastor, or our pastor is like this. So it's not good. Okay, so remind them, okay, apply it to yourself. Don't talk about someone else's life. Discipleship group leaders must cry out to God for wisdom to know when to balance or correct weird or unbiblical applications. This is the hardest part, you know, because you're building a relationship. You want to be friends with them, but you also want to correct their wrong view or wrong principles because you're discipling them. You're teaching them God's word. And if data is sensitive with our correction, if we're insensitive with our correction or criticism, it can kill the group. Okay, So that means uh, they, they can be hurt. Someone can be hurt. Everyone will be hurt. And they will think twice again on returning or committing to the group because the leader is not sensitive in correcting someone. Also, if there are unchecked heresy or wrong doctrines that, that are have been shared by some members and you're not doing something as a group leader, people who are serious with theology in a new group, they can uh, say, you know, I don't want to go back or they can question your, your leadership. Why is he not saying something? Or they will be forced to do something and sometimes create the conflict between group members because one corrected the other. It's not her job. It's your job. But because you're not doing your job, then somebody else did the job in I don't know, a conflict between group members. So very important. So like me personally, I, I can correct someone within the application time. I will probably do it, especially if very major in a thing. But I will say it in a very respectful, uh, very encouraging and motivating way. So let's be very, very uh, careful when, when you correct someone during the application part. James reminds us, <clears throat> be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like but the one who looks into the perfect law the law of liberty and perseveres being no healer who forgets but a doer who acts he will be blessed in his doing so let's apply the word of god to our uh, disciples and then lastly prayer prayer is probably the most important part of the disciples in group meeting okay make sure you have plenty of time left so your prayer time is not rushed Okay. Following are some tips for prayer during the discipleship group meeting. Keep your prayers simple, sincere, and short. Why? Because most non-believers have never heard an ordinary Christian just talk to God. And most will be touched by their simplicity and their sincerity. So if you're used to quoting a long verse while you pray, maybe that's this is not the best place to do that. Okay. If you're used to um, you know, sometimes just just pray in this high and lofty long prayers. This is not the place to do that. Keep keep your prayers simple, sincere, 
and short. Because remember, they are not Christians or they're new believers, so they don't even know how to pray. And you want to model to them how to pray, so keeping it short and simple and sincere will be a good uh, model for them. Use conversational prayer, not complicated or profound nga warfare nga, nga prayer. Don't scare them. Don't scare them by praying against the enemy. I rebuke the Satan, trying to destroy the lives of these people. I rebuke Satan in their house. <laughs> you know, so they will say, oh, there's, there's, there's a demon in my house, blah, blah, blah. So this kind of prayer will just scare them off. So don't, don't do that. This is not a time for that. This is a relational time. So conversational prayer uh, would be good. Don't say it, just pray it, okay? Spend your time praying for one another, not sharing prayer requests. You know, this confirmed my convictions before. Sometimes uh, prayer requests will just use up all of your times. So it's better to just pray, you know. Uh, and when you gather prayer requests, if the call in your group, just, just say, give me just one prayer request. So at least they will be forced to give one only. So you will not have a very long time of requesting prayer requests. More time of praying because the inordinate amount of time spent during discussing uh, time discussing prayer requests, many so-called prayer meetings should be called the prayer request meetings. Okay, and then you pray. I don't preach. Okay. If you're used to preaching while you're praying, this is not the place for that. Just pray. Encourage each, each person to pray simple sentence prayers, not loud sermon prayers or long dissertation on theology addressed to God. Designed to impress the less spiritual. Uh, there is a time and place for everything. The worship service is the place for preaching. The discipleship group is a place of prayer. So don't pray. Just don't preach. Sorry, just pray. And then listen. Keep one ear turned to whoever is praying at the moment. And the, uh, and the other to the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully during the warm-up and application time for things that may need prayer. And when you listen to your disciples pray, you will know more uh, the condition of their heart. So be very uh, attentive when they pray. Okay, Be creative as well. Don't pray in the same way and the same order every time or every period. Why was it say every time period? I think this is meant to be a period. Okay, Somebody type period. So anyway, I haven't edited this material yet. So just be creative when you pray. Sometimes you can pray silently. Everyone can pray silently. Sometimes I pray. Sometimes everybody should pray loudly. Sometimes you break them into groups. And be creative as well in the way you pray. So that's very important. Expect spiritual gifts to manifest during prayer. Well, this is, uh, you know, especially prophecy, healing, discernment, and faith. Well, this material, the, the, it, it, it was modeled after a charismatic movement in the church. Okay, so in their prayer time, prophecy, healing, whatever, but you know, of course in our, in our time, we don't have that. I forgot to cut that part out. So anyway, uh, also one thing about prayer is that you have to be very good in instructing them what to do when you, when you are praying corporately. So for example, you have new believers, but then they have they have started already praying with you so and then suddenly uh, there's a big <clears throat> like prayer time <clears throat> excuse me together with the whole group now instruct them uh, what to do because if you don't instruct them uh, sometimes sometimes they will uh, they will do it in, in a way uh, uh, it will create an awkward uh, 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 feeling or or time because you don't know how to pray corporately, pa, unlike you, na, uh, you have been a Christian for a long time. So, like for example, I, ha I had this uh, prayer time in our church center before, and I assume that these Christians know how to pray corporately already because they are from other, other in the church. And so they went to the center for, for a time of prayer. I said, okay, let's pray. And uh, I just said, okay, you go first, you go first, you go first, and then I'll close. So uh, I, I forgot <laughs> and, uh, some of them haven't tried corporate prayer time. So here's one, one lady and um, she doesn't know how to end her prayer. So she prayed. She said, you know, she talked to God, asked for something. And then she don't know how to end her, her prayer because 
she know that somebody else will pray after her. So what she did, instead of just simply saying in Jesus' name, amen, she said, um, uh, and that's it, okay? And, you know, it was supposed to be a very serious time, but it was so funny, I almost burst out laughing during the prayer time because it was very serious and she just said, uh, 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 and that's it. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, I should have instructed them uh, what to do specifically. Sometimes if I'm a group, with a group of people, you know, it's my first time to pray with them. I will really say, okay, you can end your, your personal prayer with in Jesus' name, amen. And after that, the next person can pray because they don't know how, how to do it or uh, when there are more people praying with them. So avoid those times. Okay, imagine if, if I have burst out into laughter at that time, that girl would, would have been embarrassed. Okay? Or um, it, will, it will end the prayer time, but it was my fault for not, for not teaching them how to do it okay, in the first nga, nga prayer meeting. So look who's talking. So warm up, it's 10 to 15 minutes. Everybody's talking. It's a word, the leader only is talking. So application, everyone is talking. So prayer time, everyone are praying. So, you know, it's a very relational. Uh, everybody's involved in the time instead of just one person speaking. So how do you prepare for the discipleship group meeting? Very simple. Review the content at least a day before the meeting. This will help you focus. This will help you to be confident in facilitating. Spend time reading and meditating the scripture. Uh, choose the questions that will best fit your group. Pray for those who will attend and ask God to use you to minister to them and for them to grow in their relationship with God. Uh, remind the group about the schedule and venue because here's what I know. Uh, members are very forgetful. You as a leader, you think about your group almost every day, but they don't. So you have to remind them na, not to miss this day uh, remind them one week ahead because people are busy. So the same when you're discipling someone, remind them of, of the schedule. It's easier to do that if not with group chat. So as we end, how do you kill a discipleship group? What makes the discipleship group uh, very, very not effective? Or uh, what, what can kill the gathering? Okay, number one, uh, if you collect tithes and offering, it might cause other people not to join. So no collecting of tithes and offering as a, as a group. So follow these rules. So your group does it, it will not die, okay? No mixing business with discipleship groups. So if you have if you have members, uh, they are in the multi-level marketing or networking, some of them will be very aggressive in presenting their products or services. They might ask the leader, okay, can I present the my business after our discipleship group meeting, because since everybody's there, okay, so you say no, okay, I'm sorry because this group is not a business time. You can do that uh, somewhere else, some some other time, but not at one uh, group gathering. Okay, so don't mix business with discipleship groups. No private ministry to the opposite sex. All right, so I think that's very self-explanatory, but. But sometimes new members doesn't understand this. So my uh, members who, who will say, uh, I'm gonna meet with our group mate tomorrow for counseling in the Silarang Duha. You know, so say no, don't don't do that. Okay, because we know it doesn't end well. No matchmaking. Um no matchmaking within the formal time. Sa sa inyohang kwan pag uh, study. No borrowing of money because sometimes money maka cause a problem. Or if somebody owes you something, um, na sila mo attend sa group meeting. They will be, uh, they will feel ashamed to attend the group meeting because you know you have, they, they know, you know, they have to pay you. Diba? So better nga, don't let anyone from your group borrow money. If they need something and you have something, then just, just give it. Just say, you know, you don't have to pay me back. Okay, uh, if you have someone who are always borrowing money from all your members and you as a leader, then there's a problem with that person already. So deal with him or her. And if she or he keeps doing it, he's, he's probably, there, there's, when, when people are addicted to borrowing money, there are, there are, um, there are mostly hidden reasons or uh, deeper roots like drug addiction, 
it's one of the reason uh you know just just you know deal with that person and if she or he she keeps doing he keeps doing that it's better uh, uh, you, you let him or her leave the group malang. okay because you don't want you don't want that problem same or small group or even you don't want that in in the church no guest speakers so uh, avoid inviting someone from other group to speak same or groups or a leader from other GP groups and hey can you preach for my group why because you're establishing yourself as the discipler of, of the of the person the people right so it's better you go on regular speaker and if you need a break then ask someone else within your group to speak or to teach in behalf of you because if you will bring in people outside your group to teach you some members can do that as well they will say hey hey pastor i know a pastor from this church and can i invite him to preach in our group <laughs> because you did that too right yeah you invited someone to speak for our group and the things will get messy especially if the pastor is is preaching unbiblical in the messages so better you know keep the focus you're the preacher you're the teacher you and, and the intern kamo na lang ang mag take turn no promotion of any para church ministry or event uh, spiritual or sec or secular true discipleship groups okay so don't don't promote anything in in the, in the discipleship group uh, no handling of special cases example those that need professional medical or legal counsel so for example if, if somebody is struggling with deep uh, depression don't don't um, don't say we'll handle this okay? you don't need to see a, a doctor you don't need to um, ask your family for help we your group mate will help you don't do that because um, depression is a mix of spiritual problem, uh, mental problem, okay? of course, uh, hormonal imbalances. So, so they need all the holistic uh, treatment, right? They need spiritual treatment. They need medical treatment, uh, social or psychological treatment. So encourage them to, to visit you know, all of these things to address the, the problem. So uh, don't handle it Simon group lang. like for example if there are legal battle between uh, you know divorce and the divorce your husband and wife and who one who wants to uh, take custody of, of the kid you know don't say hey hey the kid can stay in our house while while uh, while you two are you know you're still waiting for the court the order or so we can protect this kid from your abusive husband she can stay in one of our house I group don't do that because you know it will create more problem later on so if something is legal then just let the the legal officers to do it okay? or call a police or something don't handle it by yourself uh, so the group is not meant to replace their family okay it's not meant to replace the professional or medical or legal help that the the person needs it is just a time you know, teach Tanila about God and we're trying to build uh, genuine friendships within the group. So anything outside that, then you should you should let other people handle it. So your goal is to disciple them. So in summary, discipleship group meetings have four components, warm up, word, application, and prayer. The discipleship group meeting outlined here is designed to last from 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, to me, one hour is my longest target, so I always end before an hour. Okay, each of the four main parts is essential to long-term success of the discipleship group. Therefore, every discipleship group meeting should begin with a warm-up question, proceed to the word, time and application, word time and application, and then you end in prayer. Usually, snacks or uh, Movie time can follow after that, but at least the formal part should be uh, not that long. So warm up, word, application, and supplication. So our next lesson will be the last lesson, and that's about how to multiply your group. So let's say your group is growing and you cannot handle it anymore as a leader. You don't have enough space in your house. You don't have, uh, you know, you don't have enough resources to keep the group moving. So how do you multiply that group? So that's that's the last part.